World Cup fever has definitely struck Toronto. Everywhere you turn, every community is celebrating. And I would bet that when you watch your kids play soccer, you're thinking, oh, how do I get those images just like the ones I see out of Brazil? I'm going to give you a couple of tips on just how you can make those kind of pictures. Go up to each coach and say, hey, I'm a parent of this player over here. I want to take some pictures for our own personal use. Are you okay with that? Just to make sure nobody gets kind of weirded out by the middle-aged guy with the camera hanging around taking pictures of the kids. You get way more access than we get at the professional games at a professional level. Most people will have a camera something like this. It's got a medium range zoom lens on it. With this type of lens, there's no way that you're going to shoot a picture standing at one end zone of a play at the far end zone. What you need to do is wait for the action to come to you. So if you park yourself down at one end zone right by the goalpost, when the players get within a zone, start snapping pictures. Just don't miss anything at that end of the pitch, because that might be all you get. My favorite lens to use is this 500 millimeter f4 lens. You say, oh Richard, that's great. That's a very expensive lens. I say, well yes, but of course somebody else buys it for me, so this is what we use. I can stand almost anywhere on the pitch and get pictures most of the way down the field. I'm guessing you don't have one of these. Many people have something like this, which is a longer zoom lens. This is a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens. It's still pretty loose for a lot of the action pictures and you need some cropping later on. You can help things along by using something called teleconverters. And it goes between the lens and the camera body. The two times converter, of course, doubles the focal length of your lens. So my 200 millimeter lens now becomes a 400 millimeter lens. The trade-off is you need more light to make the lens work. It goes from being an f2.8 lens to an f5.6 lens. Uh, it can be a bit of an issue if your kids always play at night. But this is a fairly inexpensive way to get some of the length that you might get in a very expensive lens like this. When it comes to actually shooting the game, park yourself towards the end of the field where your players are attacking. So either way down near the corner, almost behind the net, but off to the side a little bit, with their faces coming towards you all the time, you're going to get a much more dynamic picture. Now in terms of exposures and apertures and things like that, Almost all sports look way better with the lens wide open. That means a very shallow depth of field. So we're talking f2.8, f4, in that kind of range. What that translates into is your child is nice and in focus, the ball is nice and sharp, you see the hair flying and the background goes nicely out of focus. So it's not distracting. And the other part to remember, you need a high shutter speed. Anything less than about 1 500th of a second, you really run the risk of having motion in your photographs. And motion equals not sharp. One of the other things to consider, of course, is the size of players. You'll probably find that the pictures look better if you're on your knees. Not only does it get rid of distracting elements in the background, you're looking at them a little bit more at eye level, because oftentimes they're playing a little bit hunched over. And so you're looking sort of straight up into their face. It can be a much nicer picture. If they're playing under the lights, you have to be really aware of your exposures, and you still want to maintain that high shutter speed, but chances are the shadows aren't really a concern at that point. So you just have to really take a second before you start shooting, just to see where the sun's coming from and make sure you're in the right position to make the kids look as good as possible. For the Star.com, I'm Richard Lawrence.